Good evening, everyone. This is the December 4th meeting of the Revere City Council Subcommittee on Zoning. There are several matters before the subcommittee this evening. Uh, the first is C17-14. On 28 Baldwin, uh, from 28 Baldwin Street in Winchester, seeking permission to expand a non-conforming four-unit residential to a six-unit within the RB district at 68 Garfield Ave. Is there anyone here representing this matter? The ward councillor. Madam Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, as most, I'm sorry I wasn't here last week to discuss this, but. Um, this week I um, have come with a little ammo, I would think, and I know the, uh, the site very, very well. And uh, it's a standalone building, uh, supposed to be four units, uh, there's five units. The, uh, board, the building department has already declared that fifth unit that she claims she has as illegal, um, Ill illegal. And um, there was an order, you know, there was going to be an order of uh, removal until she put her application in to see what was going to happen. Uh, I did check the parking down there. Technically, uh, as I think it was stated uh, by some of the witnesses last week, uh, that um, the parking that is down there is on the sidewalk. There's actually only one legal space on the actual property. Uh, the sidewalk goes diagonally across the building uh, of the prop where the property line is. So there's actually one legal space. All the other ones, they're parking across the sidewalk, angled parking. Uh, it is a dead end. Um, it is not finished. The city did not abandon it. Uh, it's still a part of Dana Street. And uh, I don't think that this should go through. Uh, we have uh, enough problems down there. We don't need people coming in from out of, out of our city and trying to squeeze us. And I feel very strongly against this, and uh, I don't think it should happen. So I would hope that the committee comes out with an uh, unfavorable recommendation, and then when we get to the city council, hopefully the council will deny it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Novosowski. And just uh, for the record, the members of this committee are Councillor Keith, who is absent, Councillor McKenna, Councillor Powers, Councillor Rotundo, who is absent, and Councillor Zambudo. We're also joined by Councillor Novosowski and Patch. Councillor McKenna, did you have any comments? No. no. Councillor Powers. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I agree 100% with the Ward Councillor. <clears throat> And I have my own feelings on this. I don't think we should be allowing one or two or three family or four family homes or, or any, any increases in properties that are already there. I mean, I know that, uh, I'll give you an example down the Point of Pines, one family homes that were twos at one time, a lot of them have been removed. So why in God's name would we allow someone uh, that has a, a four family uh, to or a three family to go to a four or a four to go to a six? I mean, particularly in areas where it's so heavily uh, congested, people have a problem parking down there now. It, it's, it, our school system is uh, overcrowded all throughout the city. It doesn't make sense to me to allow more apartments to come in to this city. If you're talking about a, a one bedroom where there is parking, if it's a condominium or something like that, people are making an investment in the city, I can look at that. But certainly not to take a four family and turn it into a six or, or a six to an eight. That's total insanity and I think if we do that, we're doing a disservice to the residents of this city. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Councillor Powers. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak on this? Councillor Zambudo. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, our chairman, I'm sorry. Um, a chairperson. <laughs> uh, it's been one of them days. Um, 
Although I, I'm, I'm not in favor of this proposal, I, I can't support the special permit for this uh, particular, but I won't make a blanket statement like my colleague. I'm, I take each, each and every proposal on its merit. This one doesn't meet my standards and I can't support it. However, it doesn't mean I'm not going to support a different one if I feel it uh, has the merit. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors wishing to speak on this item? Seeing as it is my opinion that this subcommittee is uh, unfavorable to this, uh, it's my recommendation that we take a vote of the subcommittee uh, for an unfavorable recommendation to be presented to the City Council this evening. Councillor McKenna. No. Well, what? It'll, be, it'll be yes on, on no. Oh, yes. yes. So we'll do it in the positive. Yeah. So, so a vote of no would be an unfavorable recommendation. A vote of yes would be a favorable recommendation. For the council tonight, yes. So yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confusing this. A vote of yes is a favorable recommendation of this proposal. A vote oh, of no, no is an unfavorable recommendation so, of this proposal to the council of a whole this evening. Okay, no. Thank you, Councillor McKenna. Councillor Powers. No. Councillor Zambudo. No. And the chair is voting no. This will be voted out unfavorably to the City Council this evening. The next item on the agenda is calendar item C-17-16, Yemen Street Investment, LLC, seeking permission from Revere City Council to construct a new three-story mixed-use development consisting of 22 residential micro-units and four commercial units at 14 Yemen Street. Is there a representative here to speak on this? Attorney Rhodes. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, my name is Corey Rhodes. I'm an attorney with D'Ambrosio Brown, LLP, 14 Proctor Avenue, Merivere. Uh, we are actually requesting uh, to continue this uh, hearing to the 18th, uh, just as Councillor Keefe cannot be here tonight uh, to hear about a project going on his ward. He, uh, he wanted to make sure it was something that he could be fully involved in, so we are requesting a continuance. And there are two uh, voting committee members that are unable to attend this evening, Councillor Keith and uh, Rotundo. So that is part of the reason why we'll be having another zoning subcommittee on December 18th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you, Attorney Rhodes. Are there any members of this committee that wish to speak? Councillor Powers? This was just for the continuance, yes. Yes. So we'll keep it in committee and uh, take it up again on the 18th. The next item on the agenda is C-17-17, HR development seeking permission from the Revere City Council to raise an existing non-conforming structure and construct a new six-story mixed-use structure with two commercial units on the first floor at 145, oh, residential units on the remaining floors at 320-329 Revere Beach Boulevard. Attorney Simeone. Good evening, Madam Chairperson. Members of the Zoning Subcommittee of the City of Revere, I represent Achara Development. It's located at 30B Railroad Street in Revere, Massachusetts. The LLC's manager is Matt Philbin. And as we told you in, at the public hearing, um, we're seeking two special permits, one to modify nonconforming structures in accordance with 1740-030, and the other one is to modify nonconforming uses all on the site in accordance with 1740-020. As uh, you'll note, the site is, is approximately 49,118 square feet. It's 1.13 acres, it consists of 11 parcels. We have two commercial non-conforming structures on the site, and um, these non-conforming structures and the attributes of those non-conforming structures, such as the front yard si setbacks, the side yard setbacks and the rear yard setbacks we seek to use in accordance with the special permit. We also have a non-conforming residential structure in the RC1 district. So a couple of points I'd like to make before I introduce uh, Rick Salvo, who will do a, a detailed review of the site, the site conditions, and uh, the proposal, is that currently the zoning allows in the this particular district, the RC1 district, is a FAR, a floor area ratio of three. And we had initially asked for relief from that floor area ratio, but uh, we've been able to modify the structure such that we will be complying 
with the floor area ratio. So when you talk about density, what you can build, everybody says what you can build. <laughs> you can build a structure that is floor area ratio three, and that's the structure that we're submitting to you. A structure that's approximately 147,000 square feet. As you, as you know, and, and we'll have the architects go through it, we'll, we're proposing a six story structure. It is a mixed use structure. And some of the relief we're asking for comes from our workings with your city planning department who seeks mixed use development. And when you look at the RC1 district, anyone who looks at the RC1 district, you'll realize it's not a mixed use development district. In fact, it, it's draconian in its acceptance of commercial uses. It doesn't allow fast food. It requires special permits for restaurants. And actually, yeah, special permits for restaurants. And, and I think it may allow some, may, I don't even think it allows residential retail uses. So in, in a nutshell, when it was developed back in 1983, when we de designed the beach and its, its trappings there, we didn't expect this area to be mixed use. Now, your planning department and other planners across the country, and you can see it in our neighboring communities, Mixed use is the way to go. It's the way to go because it allows for vibrant, consistent, long-term development. And uh, you see it in Station Landing, down in Wellington Square, and so forth. So the fact that we're proposing a mixed use development, which causes us to need additional relief, is significant. And you should know that. For example, the fact that we're asking for a front yard setback Yes, all three buildings that are currently there don't have a front yard setback, they're non-conforming. But we're proposing to put a streetscape, we're proposing to, if you will, engage the average person walking down Revere Beach Boulevard to participate in the economic environment uh, and the recreational environment there. So that's, that's, we'd like to make that pitch to you. The other thing is, is that uh, the architects are here and they'll go over the, the breaking down of the mixed use and the sizes and so forth, but I'd like to point out that we're very close to the Transit Orient District. I mean, we are within the cusp of that district. And that district has significant uh, obligations uh, with respect to parking, far less than the RC1 District. And had this site been in the Transit Orient District, and, and I, I say to you again, when you look at that district, we're like across the street from it. We clearly would have met the, the parking requirements for that district. So on the one hand, we're offering 145 units, which stick within the FAR. On the other hand, we're asking for, or we're providing 188 parking spaces, uh, which we think would have, again, if we were in the transit orient district, but we're not, okay? We're trying to, follow the planning, the planning offices and the recommendations by this administration's uh, planning staff. We're trying to be, if you will, coexistent with what is going on on Ocean Avenue. You know, Ocean Ave has mixed use development. We want mixed use development. The city wants mixed use development. So again, I'm gonna now introduce uh, Rick Salvo and he will begin the process of a detailed review of this project. And if you have any questions during the course of it, we'll be glad to answer those questions. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Attorney Simeone. Thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. For the record, my name is Rick Salvo with Engineering Alliance. We're the uh, site civil uh, engineer uh, for the subject property. <clears throat> um, as Attorney Simeone noted, um, I think everyone's pretty familiar with the location um, of the subject properties. The DCR-owned baseball field is located directly south of the project. There's two multifamily, uh, multifamily buildings just north of the project. Just north of that is the St. George. Um, the entire parcel, which is comprised of uh, nine tax map lots, um, is comprised of 49,118 square feet. Um, <clears throat> the grade of the property along Revere Beach Boulevard is about elevation 14, grades down to about elevation five at the rear of the property uh, with where the old narrow gauge uh, railroad right of way is, um, which is now the location of the power lines um, in the existing sewer service. Uh, these buildings that you see outlined in brown are the three existing structures that exist on the site. 
First is the former Boulevard restaurant, uh, Bianchi's Pizza in the middle over here, and then a two-family uh, dwelling uh, located just north of that. Um, as I said, the entire parcel is located in the RC1 district. Just to run through the requirements really quick, there's a minimum of 25,000 square feet of land area that's required. Um, this particular project has 49,118 square feet. Minimum of 100 feet of frontage is required. This project has 243 feet of frontage across Revere Beach Boulevard. Um, minimum front yard setback is 20 feet. Um, for this portion of the building and this portion of the building, as you can see, we have a zero front yard setback with a notch out in here that, zero, that varies between about five and 10 feet to provide for an outdoor seating area. <clears throat> minimum side yard setback is 20 feet. Um, we're providing 10 feet, which exists in this area over here and this area here. As you can see through the lion share of the side yard as it abuts any kind of development, there's about 24 feet of side yard setback provided. Um, rear yard setback requirement is 30 feet in this district, which our rear yard, again, is the old narrow gauge railroad, now land owned by the Commonwealth. Um, we're provided 10 feet where 30 feet is required. Principal lot coverage in this district is 85%. We're only covering 80%. Um, the maximum height, as you know, is 120 feet in this district. Um, this building is about 69 feet and change. Uh, maximum stories, as you know, is 13 feet. This is a five-story building. And the maximum FAR is three. We're at 2.98. Um, if I explain this graphic a little bit here, what you see in brown um, is what you will see um, above the first story. Um, the first story of the building will, will contain basically this whole area right here. And then just to give the building some interest and some shape, a U-shaped structure would be built above that first story. So the, the makeup of the building is two stories of, of parking, as you know, is referred to as podium parking, concrete, with five stories of wood frame construction above that, making this building um, a low-rise uh, construction project. Folks entering the project will enter through a single curb cut. The other curb cuts will be closed. Um, to get into the front level, or the top level, excuse me, you'll pull in right here um, and access 83 parking spaces. You, also, you can also proceed down a ramp to the lower level where you can access um, 105 parking spaces for a total of 188 parking spaces. There's also an easement through this property which provides access to um, 331, 330 uh, Revere Beach Boulevard, as well as the St. George, and that'll be provided and maintained uh, through this paved area um, located right here. Just quickly to take a look at utilities. Um, there's an existing 18-inch PVC sewer main along the rear of the property. Um, so that, that will be sufficient to service this property, so the sewer will be connected out the re rear of the building. Transformer will be located in the back of the building over here, keep it out of the public view, um, and that happens to be conveniently where the power lines are. <clears throat> um, water will be connected to the existing uh, water main that was recently reconstructed in 2008 as part of the Revere Beach Boulevard improvements um, will include um, uh, domestic water service as well as a fire service, obviously, for, as this building will be completely sprinkled. And gas service will also be provided through there. Stormwater management on the site, as you can see, the majority of the site is the building. So the roof area of the building um, will be infiltrated along the rear of the property line in that 10-foot swath um, in a series of 18-inch um, perforated um, ADS pipes that are 160 feet long times three rows surrounding an envelope of crushed stone. This will help promote groundwater recharge as well as mitigate um, the rate of stormwater runoff. Just to touch a little bit on the site permitting, um, obviously we're going to need to complete the site plan review process um, as well as the, the council and the ZBA process. In addition to that, um, the rear of this property from about this point back is located within the 100-year floodplain. 
So we'll have to file a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission as the 100-year floodplain is a t protected resource area uh, under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and we also will require a DCR curb cut permit um, in order to provide access at the, at the curb cut um, as well as access for the utility construction that will occur um, in the boulevard. Obviously, the entire width of the sidewalk will be completely reconstructed um, as part of this project. Um, and that's, that's essentially the way the, the entire site lays out in a nutshell. I know there's a lot of technical information there. Um, but I think um, at this point, I'll turn it back over to Larry, and we'll talk a little bit about traffic, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. So, uh, Madam Chair and Woman, I'd just like to take the opportunity. With some of the setback requirements, you know, um, as minor as they are, you know, on such a large site, I just want to point out for the committee and to the general public that we open a, a good deal of space that will be utilized by the residents, pool, green space, you know, it's elevated, but it's still available. Um, that would enhance the type of units we have, and NRP is proposing. Um, NRP is uh, represented by local counsel Jim Cipolletta, who's here with me in case anybody has any questions for him. Uh, at this time, we're going to make a presentation relative to traffic. We know that the council is interested in hearing that issue. Uh, I want the council to note that the city did put out an RFP uh, and has received three bids from traffic consultants. Uh, significant uh, scope of work uh, that they intend to use. I can tell you that a charity development supports that effort and uh, will support it uh, in any way the administration sees necessary, um, including making some type of uh, contribution to the costs of the traffic study. So. At this time, I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Altman. She, rep she works for Tech, and uh, she'll make a presentation. You should have already received, uh, through the clerk, the traffic studies, and she'll walk your way through that traffic study. All right? Thank you very much. Ms. Altman. Hi. I'm Liz Altman. I'm a traffic engineer with TEC out of Lawrence. And we were retained by the applicant to prepare a trip generation study for the subject site. The first thing that we did was generate traffic for the existing site um, based on methodology um, published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers. They are a nationally recognized um, methodology for generating traffic. I will note that their publication for apartment units and the land uses that are within this site are primarily suburban. So everybody drives there and everybody drives home. So I would say they're conservative for this type of site, but in order to do that kind of conservative analysis, we didn't take any justification or modification of those IT straight numbers. So for example, um, the existing site has about a 2,000 square foot bar restaurant, the 1,900 square foot pizza place, and a two family. So the current traffic, if this site were in the middle of Tewksbury, would generate about 1,200 trips per day. That's including deliveries, pe visitors, people going in and out of the site every day. So that's the existing site, and the proposed site with the 2,500 square feet restaurant and the 145 apartment units are projected to generate 2,200 daily trips. Again, that is entering and exiting. That's everybody, visitors, delivery men, if the site was in the middle of Tewksbury. So it's very conservative for a city, more urban area. So the, then what we did was we subtracted the existing from the proposed to find the new trips that would be generated by the site. That comes to 998 daily trips, so about 1,000 trips per day. That 
new trips would be about 74 during the morning peak hour, 90 during the evening peak hour, and 74 on Saturday during the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. The table, I think that's what they're trying to find. Okay, table one on page four illustrates the existing trip generation summary. Um, the, fat, the restaurant and the bar obviously don't generate any traffic during the morning peak hours currently. So that's where you can see the 20, 1202 um, total existing traffic daily. Table two on the next page, page page five would be the trip generation for the proposed site. The 2200 is on the upper right of that table. Um, again, this is standard nat national methodology um, for a suburban type of apartment. Table three on the next page, page six, illustrates the subtraction. The proposed traffic minus the existing traffic gives you the new traffic that would be generated by this site. Um, so essentially, as I said, you can see 74 peak hour trips during the morning. When you think of an apartment building, 145 apartments, not everybody gets up at 7 o'clock in the morning and everybody leaves at 7 a.m. or 8 o'clock in the morning. There's a distribution of that traffic over the course of the day, people going in and out. That's why you don't see um, 145 people exiting and 145 people coming back in in the evening. It's more distributed. Um, people come home early, they leave late, shift work, that type of thing. The location of this site on Revere Beach Boulevard is, has um, fantastic access to, to transit. Um, it's a block away from a bus stop. It's less than a half a mile from <clears throat> the Wonderland T station. The applicant is proposing to provide transportation um, demand, um, excuse me, transportation demand management um, methods to help reduce the vehicle trips um, generated by the site. These would include bicycle storage for residents to, to bicycle to the T, um, shuttle, participating in a shuttle service to the T station, um, de-incentivizing parking on the site, providing on-site amenities such as dry cleaning service and things like that to reduce the number of vehicle trips that come in and out of the site one-on-one, -on -one. like one person coming in, oh, I forgot my groceries, I gotta run back out or whatever. Um, so we are comfortable saying that the traffic generated by the site with less than 100 new trips during the evening peak hour, it will not have I don't believe that it will have a noticeable impact on the operation of the adjacent roadway system. There are some constraints within the existing waterfront area roadway system that, again, the city has released an RFP to study, um, and the applicant has agreed to be a willing contributor towards that study, but we don't believe that this specific development will noticeably um, degradate or impact the existing operations of these already constrained system. So that is my presentation. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Attorney Simeone? So I'm going to introduce uh, Talia Castrina. She works for Cube 3. I probably just ruined her name like I've done 10,000 times before. However, she won't, won't ruin her presentation, Madam Chairperson. That said, um, 
To remind the council and subcommittee, we have 145 units. The breakdown is 55% will be one bedrooms and studios. And 45% um, will be two bedrooms and 3% will be three bedrooms. We're offering at this point 188 parking spaces off street, which brings us up to 1.35%. Again, to remind the council that in the RC1 district, parking requirements are 1.25 for a one bedroom, 1.75 for a, for a uh, I take that back. 1.75 for a two bedroom and for a three bedroom or more, two spaces as required. So we're uh, a little behind on that. I think we have, at this point, we're about 40 spaces off the mark. Um, the estimated cost of rents for these units is going to be uh, for a studio and a one bedroom between $1,985 to $2,185. A two bedroom should be $2,850, and three bedrooms should be like $3,500. And so the other thing is, is that we are working very, very hard to bring uh, Bianchi's and keep them committed to the city of Revere. We certainly consider this one of the attributes of our mixed use project that not only, not only brings in the fact that we're putting in mixed use and we're trying to make a vibrant corridor, but we want that historic uh, part of Revere to remain. There's not that many pieces left, and we're lucky to have Kelly's, and Bianchi certainly goes back to the 1950s with Joe Nemo and so forth. So it, it, we clearly think the Bianchi's, uh, making, ha having Bianchi's as a part of the project is certainly a great aspect of the project. Finally, I'm gonna introduce this young lady and she's going to take you through the actual architectural drawings. And I'm going to try to assist her the best I can. The committee needs to know that these are the presentations that we filed and these are the presentations that she's going to make. But we do have a meeting scheduled on November 12, December 14th with the St. George. It is expected, and I'm, I'm sure the young, my friend here will they're expected to work on some colors and building uh, materials. Okay? So, Talia? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Sure. Thank you. For the record, my name is Talia Canistro with Q3 Studio. Um, I'm working on the architecture side of the project. So, I'll keep this brief. Um, Rick and Larry did a great job of giving you an overview. Um, but from the architecture standpoint, we have one story of retail and residential leasing on the first floor with parking beneath that and behind it on that same level. And then the five stories of residential are on top of that, um, adjacent to the, the raised um, courtyard, which has the pool and the amen outdoor amenities for tenants. Um, we wanted to give it a more contemporary feel, um, have its own identity on the beach, and um, but still give it some um, present on the street. Um, again, we really wanted to activate that street edge and sidewalk, give some outdoor seating to the to the retail spaces, which will probably be Bianca's Pizza and potentially a coffee shop, um, some kind of rent restaurant use. Um, on this corner here is where the residential tenants will enter the building and circulate up through the, the stair and elevator cores. There's bike storage within the garage and um, some tenant storage areas as well. And then um, all, there's also some amenity spaces on the topmost floor overlooking the beach as well. Um, so if you have any questions about materials or anything else architecture related, I'm here to answer them. Thank you. So Madam Chairperson, um, just pointing out to some of the benefits of the project, which includes the fact that this is a $50 million project. and. This type of mixed-use development has started years ago with a gentleman named Blackstone. He was a consultant, I told you that. But you can see one major project after another in communities like Medford and Saugus are leaning their zoning, trying to attain that mixed-use development. 
And so that's what we've, we feel is a major benefit to, to this community by this project. First of all, NRP is a classic, um, well, well established and well respected uh, part of the apartment and multifamily development community. And they are our capital partners. And it's expected that um, you know, they will be working with us very hard to meet the th goals and the benefits that we think this project will establish. One of the things that the, com the city council has to look at is the fact that Somerville, Medford, all of these communities now, uh, their, their economy is just increasing at um, very high speeds. And here we are, Revere has finally hit that landing level. You know, we've got major capital players wanting to come to Revere. And I've got Jim Cipolletta with me. He'll talk a little bit about NRP. But I would be remiss in, in reminding the council that this $50 million project um, it will be a, a real step forward in the city of Revere, along with the fact that you've got three, you know, you've got a CIT fund, the INI fund for inflow and infiltration, and building permit costs, uh, along with the hundreds of jobs that it will create uh, for this region. So. The only other thing, as a housekeeping matter, is when we close our presentation, we would like to continue this matter to the, to the 18th so that we could uh, bring you up to date with any discussions and elevation changes or material changes that we make with our discussions with the St. George. And certainly, we would like uh, the two councilors, or at least Councilor Keefe, uh, to be part of that presentation as well in case he has some questions. All right, uh, Attorney Cipolletta. Madam Chair, Council is James Cipolletta, 385 Broadway, Revere. And thank you for not <clears throat> making me speak for an hour. But I wanted to just uh, highlight a couple of different things. And uh, having appeared before this council and uh, for over 30 years on various projects, I've come to know what the council expects and what the council looks for in different projects. And a couple of things that are very important is the background of the person who is standing before you and your ability to believe what they say. Thirdly, it's very, very important to know that the credibility of each applicant who signs an application, who comes before your council, is something that you rely on when you go back to uh, deliberate, when you talk to your constituents, when you look at the uh, plans and the submissions, and that's very important. And I think that in this case, we have all three of those, um, those components coming together. First, the project is an outstanding project, but I think you really ought to know, and you do know Matt Philbin because we've worked with him before. He's been before you on a number of projects. He's done an outstanding job in the, in the city with regard to the development of the hotel and the operation of that hotel and some other residential uses as well. My client is NRP. They are based out of Cleveland, Ohio, and they are the seventh largest developer in the United States. They are the sixth largest construction company in the United States. They have partnered with Matt and his group, and they were excited to become part of the project. First, because they knew that Matt and his uh, professional team is able to put together a project that both the equity partner and the city can be proud of. And they are also very impressed with the way and the direction that the city of Revere is, is moving. And they are looking forward, as I stood here the other night with Carolyn Mendel, who is a principal with NRP, and introduced you to her. And I think you had an opportunity to hear what she said and, and get a sense of what she and her company is about. Those things coming together, all in the same file, all in the same application, the project, the, the, the principals, the backing, the motivation to become part of the Revere landscape and the Revere community, I think, is, as I said on Monday, is a win-win situation for everyone. As this project rolls out, there will be some uh, fine-tuning to it. Uh, we are meeting with uh, some of the residents, uh, the neighbors and the residents of the St. George, the abutters on, uh, Revere, on Revere Beach. And as the professionals, um, the engineers and the traffic people start to drill down a little more, you probably you might see a little bit of tweaking to the project, but it's only to make it better. Thank you.
Thank you, Jim. Um, that would wrap up our uh, part of the presentation. Uh, we'll stand ready to answer any questions. Uh, again, we have our traffic consultant and our architect here. Um, so it's, at this point, I'll leave it up to you, Madam Chair. Perfect. Before I open it up to the council, uh, one question just present to the council. Uh, site plan review, are there any comments on the seven recommendations from site plan? We have not gone back to site plan uh, review yet. Okay. Um, we had hoped to have a, a earlier meeting with the St. George, uh, so we, we were holding that information, to, hoping to have that meeting and then go into that uh, site plan review uh, committee meeting. So at this point, we will probably go next week. Okay. And the findings and recommendations will be forwarded to you by Mr. Stringy. Um, if we have an issue with one of them or we need to augment or explain one of those conditions, we'll have that opportunity on December 18th. Perfect. Thank you, Attorney Simeone. Councilor McKenna. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I just want to ask a couple of questions, and I don't know. I, I know I sat with you and Matt, but um, I just I don't remember. Uh, is the paid parking, the 188 parking spaces, are they um, free for the uh, tenants, or do, is that a paid parking? Um, parking spaces are part of the unit, and they're not separately. They're, they're part separate. of the union, and they're part of the unit. Part of the unit, unit rent, and, and they don't have they, to pay for them. They don't have to pay for them individually. Okay, that's excellent. Now, I suppose, you know, I'll question. Okay, if someone wants an additional space and one is available, someone wants two spaces, sure. you know, that might come into play. Sure, okay. The other thing I want to ask is um, where do you, um, it says that you have, I, I think I, if I read it wrong, tell me, but it says it's, uh, you have 17 spaces for the restaurant, is that true? I don't know the way that is. Okay. Um, is that in, it's not in the application. So, so what happens it would have to, be to the, the, people that are coming to these restaurants in, in Bianchi's Pizza, and um, okay. where are they going to park? They would park where they normally park. They're talking about the average customer that goes to Bianchi's. That would be on the Revere Beach Boulevard. Okay. Currently, Bianchi's, um, within the lot that it has, uh, does not have sufficient parking. Right. I know that they kind of park all over the place in the sure. back there, so it would be uh, almost impossible to tell you who's parking just to go to the beach and who's going to a restaurant. So. But now you're going to double the space. Be, you're going to double the spaces because you're going to have another commercial uh, entity there. So um, actually, you know. the, with the, the commercial entities will be a little smaller than the ones there now. Okay. I believe the restaurant is about 2,100 square feet. You can just uh, yeah. give me one second. I'll answer that question. Yeah, so you have the, uh, yeah, I, I think one of the particular units is like 2,100 square feet and the other one is about 1,800 square feet. So that'd be like 4,000 square feet of commercial space that's there now, notwithstanding the two family. But uh, currently we're, we, we tapered that down to 2,500. Okay, and the, uh, I got a couple more questions. Um, entrance in and out one door? The entrance to the building? Yes, entrance in the building and out of the building is one door. For residents, to pedestrians yes. to walk in and out? Yes, there'd be no, one. No, for parking. For parking, no. So on the side of the, um, on the right side of the building, there's right. an entry drive, that's one entry drive off of the street. But then there's an upper entrance to the garage and then a lower entrance to the garage without those two levels connecting interior to the building. So, so but I'm asking is there's just one entrance, one door entrance, and you can go down, you can go up, or you can go yes. Yeah, so there's, so there's one, only one entrance. There's one entry to the building site, yes. That's okay. correct. And with the, um, I think, Mr. Sav Salvo, um, the runoff, you, have, you talked about the roof and the water runoff. Um, I know in the city we have had some problems with large buildings and runoff and they flood. Um, a great example is McMacken Field. There's a couple of problems there, but the runoff from this big building, uh, it goes into the field and floods the field. I was just wondering, that's conservation land that sits next to this building. Where is this? I know you have, you said you had three pipes on the top of the roof. Uh, where is that in the where is that water going to go? It has to go somewhere. So is it going to go down into the con conservation land? Yeah, so great question. 
um, obviously this particular project's uh, required to fully comply with the DEP stormwater management regulations, okay. which are fairly new regulations in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, you know, development is very different today than it, as it was uh, even as much as 10 years ago. But the, the three pipes, and I think I might have snubbed you here. No, that's all right. I, I can the see it on the The three pipes are right here. They're at ground level. They're not up on the roof. So the roof will, will have an interior roof drain, which will drain down in several pipes. Um, and those pipes will have enough capacity to hold all of the runoff that's generated by that roof and all storms up to including the 100-year storm. And then it allows it to slowly infiltrate back down into the ground where it would go anyways. We've done borings there, so we know the soils are sufficient for it. So all the storm will be completely mitigated for this site. Thank you, Thank you very much. And yet the building looks beautiful, by the way, the uh, rendition. Thank you, Councilor McKenna. Councilor Powers. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, uh, for the edification, I do uh, represent the area down there. And uh, I want to also mention that uh, Matt Philbin is a great guy. He's done a tremendous job with Roadway Inn, what used to be a, a rooming house and some other ventures in the city. My problem is the density of the project. 145 or 149, whatever it is, units, okay? Why not put something in there that can be done as a matter of right? And then I've heard people talking about, well, we can go 12, 13 stories, it's RC1, go ahead, it makes a better building. And you can't go that many uh, parking uh, floors of parking unless you take away from the apartments or condos or whatever they happen to be, in this case, apartments. Uh, I, Ms. Arden, uh, Ms. Alton, is it? Uh, I know, have you ever been, could you come to the podium, please? Have you ever been down on Revere Beach Boulevard at, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, 7.30, eight o'clock, and seeing the bottleneck at the top of Revere Street and Ocean Avenue coming off of the boulevard? I have not been there at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I have been there at four or five o'clock in the afternoon um, and seen. Yeah, well, you know, then you know it's because it's basically similar, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I don't know if you're aware that uh, the old Cove site on Revere Street, they're putting in 51 units there of housing, mostly two and three bedroom units as a matter of right. I've been before conservation. I, I, they, they were denied in order of conditions. We had the state down there, DEP, we had MEPA. I voiced my concern very clearly that I think it's too intrusive into the neighborhood. The other thing is, you know, uh, we have a school system in Revere, as do most other cities and towns. We heard testimony up here a week ago that the Paul Revere School is overcrowded already. I would love to know if anybody's been a study, done a study as to how many kids will be coming out of a building with two bedroom units and three bedroom units. Really, I mean, have you done a study, Councillor? Actually, I have not done a study for this particular project uh, through you, Madam Chairperson, to Councillor Powers, but the data that comes out of the Board of Assessors and other city departments has clearly established things like the North Revere project, where there's multiple units up there, are not having a yield of a lot of children from those one and two bedroom right. apartments. We expect the same to be to continue on Ocean Ave as well as the boulevard. For your edification. The, the target population. They have a playground up there the, also. That's how many kids they have going. Uh, not there. that many. And you can the record speaks for itself. Those records you can pull yourself, Councillor. But the, the target population, as this council knows, is the same target population in nineteen eighty three we were looking for. People who were, want to call them yuppies, millenniums, whatever the, the name has changed. But these were people that essentially were looking to rent 
at a high rate, not have a car, have a different lifestyle than the average Revere citizen. The average Revere citizen is a hard-working person. Most of them want a house, and you know they have cars. That's not the kind of person that's the target population here. We have transit, we have shuttles, we have <coughs> zip cars. The world has changed, Council of Powers, and the well, target population, the, the, count, the population that we're looking for doesn't come anywhere near the, as the average citizen in Revere uh, would know if you were living in Revere. If I lived on Ridge Road, as I did for many, many years, my father had a two, bed, my father had a two family, and he had children. So do the people that rented have children. That's not the case on Revere Beach Boulevard and Ocean Ave. Far be it from me, I, I can't imagine the expense it costs to live in those units. And that's why they're high income individuals, individuals that use transit, individuals that use shuttle, individuals that use Uber. Okay. It's a whole different world. Well, you know, down on Vanguard, down on Ocean Avenue, mm -hmm. go by there at night, I don't think you can see five or six apartments with lights on them. They're not renting them. Those people aren't coming into the city in most cases. Those people are not renting those. You know, you're, you're right in the middle of a, a, a flood area, okay? Now, where, can you tell, uh, maybe the uh, architect or the engineer can tell me, where does the water go from the two garages, the runoff water? Mr. Salva? Sure, so uh, let me just make sure I understand the question. I think I'll, I'll answer the question for you. I think by state law, it goes into the sewer system. Correct. And the city of Revere is adversely charged for sewerage going into that system. It doesn't just go on into drainage. Well, yeah, well, the state plumbing code requires that any garage parking you have in excess of six spaces must discharge into the sanitary that's, that's sewer. That's correct. You don't that, have a choice. That, that's correct, yeah. okay, which is already for the most part, overtaxed in that area, Bay Road, Sachem Street, Loring Road, that whole area down in there. You know, I, I made my position very clear on this, okay? If you were coming before the city council looking to put as many condominiums as you could as a matter of right with people making an investment in this city, and you needed maybe a slight variance, maybe that's something I could look at. But this here, I cannot support, and I, I just can't. I got the message loud and clear this last election. You're talking about a meeting in the St. George, that's great, I recommended it, okay? But there's people who live in the Point of Pines, Oak Island, they go to work every morning. They come up that boulevard. They go out for the day, do shopping or whatever. They come up that boulevard. It's very difficult to find a time early in the morning or late in the evening. When I say late in the evening, I'm talking people coming home from dinner. When that, when, when that building, uh, when that boulevard isn't packed full with, with cars. You know it and I know it. And that's my position on this. I cannot support that project the way it is now. Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Councillor Powers. Councillor Zambudo? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. I, I thought the new uh, transit-oriented development projects were like 85% capacity when it was finished. I, I don't know what my colleague is talking about when he's saying they can't rent them. I, I thought they were full. Um, However, that's getting, that's getting off the track. I want to go back to something you said, Councillor, about North Revere and the Roseland properties. I had that argument with the superintendent, the former superintendent of schools, for years. And he kept telling me we're going to be inundated, inundated with children. Last count I heard was 22 out of, I don't know, 1,500 apartments or 2,000 apartments. 20 kids total. They just, this is just not the type of project that produces kids. The other arguments, the other arguments are great. I mean, I want to know where the water's going. I want to, I want to know there's enough retention. I know the sewer pipe has, has been uh, expanded years ago. We uh, brought a 12-inch sewer line there. 
some of the some of the other uh, uh, things I want to know about, I, and I, I want a lot more information before I vote on this project, obviously. But uh, I think the other council said uh, the reputation of the play is involved. Uh, 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 one of the things that I look at first, and uh, Pat Philbin is a a model developer, a model citizen, the type of person I want to come before this council to build something because I know what I'm going to get. I know that I had a, a flop house on American Legion Highway. And I, when I, tell, I say a flop house, I'm being kind. Flop house was, that's, that's being real kind. Bottom line is it's a first rate uh, flag, ho flag uh, national flag uh, choice hotel. That's what we get with developers like this. So when they come before a proposal, with a proposal I know there's going to be opposition, especially on the boulevard. I, I, I dare say I didn't see as much opposition to the monstrosity at the other end of the boulevard of, of almost 300 apartment units. Didn't see because there's nothing. Uh, evidently, the people in 505 didn't, didn't protest enough or, or weren't, uh, weren't complaining enough. But uh, I see a much bigger uh, project down there that uh, uh, worries me. And uh, I know I'm going to hear that there's probably more one bedrooms in that, uh, that building than there are in this one by a percentage. But guess what? Uh, I believe, I, I agree with Councilor Simeone when he, when he talks about millennials and, and people, are not, people are not going in $1,500, $1,800 apartments uh, that, that work in Boston and Revere. Most of them don't even own cars. Or if they need a car, they rent a, a, a zip car or one of the other uh, uh, cars. Or, or they call an Uber or a Lyft or uh, some of the things that I, I still haven't uh, come up to speed on because I'm, I'm not thrilled that they put some of my friends in the taxi business out of business. But this is the way of the future here. And, and, and uh, so there's a lot more questions I'm going to ask and probably uh, on the 18th. But, uh, and, and I still have some concerns about this project, and, it, it, you know, what I, the one thing I will ask you is, just for my, uh, what, so my understanding, tell me what can be built there by right. Tell well, me exactly what can be built there by right with, well, we, we're with building, enough parking yep, and we're, all. We're building what can be built there by right under the floor area ratio. We're building three... Point zero, which is three times the amount of the land mass. We're building that, and we're building it by right. The only things we're looking for, and, I, and I've heard things about minor variances, but we're, in some respects, these are minor special permits because really they're talking about setbacks. You know, coming in for modification of non-conforming structures to identify the same setbacks that those existing structures have and then doing what the city is asking us to do, which is essentially create a streetscape, I would say they come very close to the minimus requ requests. As far as the idea of the number of units, if you built a, you know, something that's 13 stories and um, takes up a, a good portion of the lot as allowed under the principal building lot coverage, you're probably looking at something north of 200 units. And, so, and you're saying that if you built that monstrosity, you could have enough parking uh, for, those, for those 200 units. Absolutely. Because they, one of the things the council has to remember is under the zoning law, you're allowed to build lot line to lot line, one story under. And you, do, you, know, you saw the designs that have come by over the years. You could see they take advantage of that. These individuals are trying to not do that. They're building above ground. They're not going into the ground to dig out the ground and cause a disruption and so forth. They're trying to use the land as they see it. They're as environmentally uh, protective a corporation that you'll ever find in this industry. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Novosowski. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, I don't know who would answer these, but uh, first of all, on the drainage going f out of the garage. That would be Mr. Self. Now, you said those have to be uh, drained right into the sewage system. 
correct. Are there oil separators put in there? Yes. In all? Yeah, so the, the only flow that they see is when a car pulls in on a rainy day or when a car pulls in on a snowy day, whatever drips out of the car lands on the ground and doesn't either evaporate before it hits the dr drain or actually makes it to the drain. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very low flow. On uh, another issue um, regarding drainage and even the um, roof drains, uh, was there any uh, talk of uh, storage, underground storage to hold it in case there's a high tide and the water can't go out to retain it and then when it does go out it pumps it out? Yeah, so the system's a two-part system. It's a retention system and an <clears throat> infiltration system. So storm water runs off of a site in cubic feet per second, it percolates into the ground in inches per hour. So we have a device that stores and holds it <clears throat> based on the 100-year storm and then allows it to slowly percolate back down into the ground. Cool. Um, now we're talking a, a two-level garage under? Correct. Uh, now, are both of them below grade of the, of the boulevard? No, one is below grade of the boulevard and one is at grade with the boulevard. At grade. Be masked by the retail in the front so you'd never see any parking from the front. Uh, of the building. But you can see it from the rear. Yeah, to, You'd be able to see you know, it from the rear if, if you, walk, if you went down the easement, correct. Now, uh, I don't know if this is for you as far as uh, leasing units. Uh, is there a minimum salary for someone to sign a lease? Uh-oh. I used to... I started a war here. <laughs> Keep in mind, too, I rather Nobody, have... <laughs> everybody... We, uh, we, we rather have accurate information, so if that's something that you can submit for the meeting at the 18th, we rather it be yeah. right than a, a maybe. No, I, I know the answer for, for NRP. It's uh, Richard Bennett, 30 Railroad Street, a charter development. Um, the uh, NRP, which, um, as Councillor Sepuleta had said, is uh, the seventh largest apartment residential company in the country, and they run full credit. An aspect of every credit uh, is income verification, all of that. They're, and they view this as kind of a premium property. So uh, their standards on this, I believe, will be quite high. But the answer is yes, they, they, um, they very much care about the tenant who will be in there. Um, and that includes the ability to pay the rent. They don't want to get people in there who can't pay the rent. Do we have, do we have a ballpark on what that starting number is? I, I, the, the range in rents even is great. So obviously for an efficiency, it's far less than, you know, the, the right. three-bedroom yeah. one. But I couldn't tell you. And I, I would venture a <clears> guess, <throat> but I'll be happy to find out that they probably do don't have it canned. It's probably know, yeah. an elastic concept. I know many of the other complexes that are around the... Riviere and Chelsea uh, started at 80,000 on a yep. minimum, but now you know now they're going up to even 120,000, and you're getting a brand of, better brand of person. There's no problem there. Yeah. I'm not saying the other people are bad, but it's just saying you know they're making more money uh, to be able to substantiate the rent that you know made the, you may be getting for this uh, father's property. But um, as Attorney Simeone mentioned. The demographic for this is uh, that they're targeting, which I think you have materials on, and uh, they are the classic millennials, and they think that the people that are currently overpaying in the seaport but yet can get to the seaport by the T-stop right by here, those young millennials that very often don't have that car, uh, that uh, put all of their money into living in a nice space, and quite frankly might take a job out and Palo Alto in, you know, six years or something. It's a, it is a different demographic, and that's exactly who they are targeting. And that the investment in terms of the grade of finishes and everything is higher per square foot on this than what you've seen in a lot of, particularly that new development, say, in Chelsea and whatnot. So, um, but, I, but I don't want to give you the wrong number, the NRP. And I'm not sure they will have a specific number, but it's generally within the market. And I, could, I would venture to say they probably are targeting somebody with a, a decently high income. And, Hopefully, from the city's perspective, I have to say that's the first step. And then they enjoy the city, they enjoy the beach, they maybe meet somebody nice, they want to say they get to start a house, and it's, a, it's I think, good for the city, too. But that is who they're targeting to try and bring cool. in. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman, just, yep. just to point out, at the, at the public hearing, uh, Council Novosowski, we handed out the demographics that NRP uses. 
So I don't have a copy in front of me, but we did file it with you. Um, we can provide it to you again, but it goes it grows across the, the, the various dem you know, demographic groups, one of which is empty nesters. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Patch. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Chairperson. Um, first of all, uh, again, I uh, am open-minded here on, uh, on, the, on this project, as I mentioned at the public hearing. Um, I do have some knowledge uh, of the past 10 years of dealing with the uh, Overlook Ridge uh, development. Um, and as far as uh, I keep a close eye on it, and uh, I, uh, I see the clientele that, that rents there, and, uh, um, and basically, uh, you're right. It's, it's younger people that uh, they have a shuttle, in the morning, and he picks them up. He takes them back in the afternoon. Um, they also have a traffic problem on Salem Street um, in the morning and the afternoon, uh, but it's caused by outside city traffic mostly. Um, the same as the uh, that I believe the Boulevard in, in Ocean Ave is. Uh, people uh, from Marblehead, Swamps getting hot, and. But uh, to get back to the, uh, the overlook, um, as far as children, um, over the 10 years that I've been a counselor, I don't feel that, uh, I, don't, I think the highest number that ever uh, been in there is like 40. Um, now that's not, that's the two buildings that are Revere Apartments. And I also have knowledge that uh, probably a good percentage of them are people that work there, that have uh, maintenance jobs, that uh, get the apartments, free apartments, and uh, they, that's, they, they bring in their children. Um, I think uh, this project will, will get the same uh, type of people, and uh, that they're getting like in well in circle and uh, and on Ocean Ave, I mean, it, 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 I don't know. The rents, the rents are unbelievable. I don't. But this is the way that these younger uh, working professionals want to live. Um, I do want to keep an open mind on the uh, on the uh, just the. The, tra the traffic, I want to mention that the traffic on the, um, that circle on Ocean Ave, where they all combine, Ocean Ave, Revere Street, that problem was there for years, uh, even before they built on Ocean Ave. And uh, uh, again, it's caused by the people shortcutting 1A, going home, uh, or going to work. Um, I don't know why it, uh, the state delegation uh, should have looked at that problem uh, a long time ago. And also the problem in my ward, up in Ward 6, uh, the problem that one, eight, one cause, Route 1 causes on Washington Ave, Linden Square, and uh, Salem Street. Uh, it should have been fixed a long time ago. And there's always been money there, but they just see, it just seems to disappear up north somewhere when it's time to build. Um, so, again, uh, to get back to the development, I, 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 like, the, I like the building. I, I think it's a uh, well-designed well building. Um, I also feel that it's a, uh, the developer is a fine gentleman that has done good work in the city. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. And hopefully um, they can tweak it. I'd like to see it tweaked a little more. Uh, and I hope they can uh, come up with uh, uh, a little less of a um, density, a little less maybe. 
Um, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens on the, uh, I believe we'll go, it's going to wait till the 18th? Correct. Yes. So I'll, uh, I'll wait till the 18th to, be, to make up my decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. <coughs> Last but not least, Councilor hey, Bonasso. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, it seems to me like over the past couple of weeks that the uh, Boston Globe has been spotlighting different projects throughout the uh, state. And namely, it's brought uh, uh, a clear attention to the matter of uh, building where millenniums are involved and uh, what beneficial uh, factors they do for a community to make a community grow. I was quite upset when I read the Lynn item in the front page when I saw that the medium income in Revere is about $50,000, which is uh, second lowest to Lynn in the, in the immediate area. So what does that suggest to all of us? It suggests to us that we have to get people in here that are having an income that's greater than the $50,000 value that's been placed in, in medium income. It means that we need more millenniums within that community. It means that everything I read in the last few weeks, and I subscribe to Forbes magazine because I love to read things like uh, those type of it. And, and they uh, put an insight into my head I was so opposed to this project based on the fact of general conception. Everybody. I own a property in Atlantica, two doors down from this place. And regional traffic is what creates the traffic on Revere Beach. Make no mistake about it. Traffic going back and forth. Now, I would go down there tomorrow, and you see all day tomorrow, you see light traffic, light traffic. Why? Because they aren't going to Revere Beach sightseeing. I traveled to Derry, New Hampshire this past weekend. There's, there's traffic everywhere. And in Derry, New Hampshire, you think you're in the boondocks? It's not. There's traffic there. So traffic escapes no one. Traffic is everywhere. Everybody has three, four, five cars. And, and, and that's fine. That's the American way. But I'm, I'm really taking a second look at this project. And I really, uh, I was, uh, and I spoke to the attorney, and I told him that uh, I couldn't go for something like this because I was fearful of the additional traffic that it would impact that immediate area. I represent the people right around the corner there. I have tons of friends in Ward 5. And they can put any faith in the world they want in anything that they read. Go down this next week. Go down the next two weeks. Go down for the next three months and tra traverse Revere Beach. It's not traffic generated by the residents of Revere Beach or anywhere else. It's tr people traveling back and forth to Swampscott, Marblehead, Lynn, and all those areas. Do we blame? And, and, I, and I said this before on several occasions. I stood out in front of these condos and I watched. 8 o'clock, I watched at 10 o'clock, I watched at 6 o'clock at night, I watched at 9 o'clock at night, two cars in, three cars out, two cars in. No traffic impact at all. I'm very fearful that we have to grow our community. I'm very fearful that I. I be, uh, city is becoming an age, low, lower income community. We've got to grow this community. We've got to make some, put some money into it. We can't carry the burdens of the world for everybody. I mean, everybody comes to Revere because they know that we're very lenient. We have all these great programs, and namely, we have all these great schools. We did that, and we should have done that. That's our job to do that. But we also have to provide for the others. We have to provide for people who live here a better life and a better quality of life, and, and not to suggest that more money means better people, but it brings a different type of person. And I think it, uh, millennials, as they might need be, they have to come to Revere Beach. Go, what's, the, what's the best spot on the East Coast? This is where you want them to come to. And so uh, I'm, I'm not seeing them for the project, not seeing them against it, but I'm just, it's, it's changed my mind completely, and I've been reading these articles and putting some research behind it, and. And everything's leading up to it, but when I saw that article in the Lynn item, it says, wow, you know, we've got to grow this community. We've got to do something to uh, put an infusion in, in here for, for financial gain for everybody to prosper. And meaning that you bring more money into the city, means every business community, every business person in the city makes money. They increase their profits. And so it gives a better quality of life for them. And we're taking care of our own residents in the, in the same time. Madam Chairperson, I know you're putting this pressure on me, so I'm, I'm talking faster than I can think. So uh, to respect to you, I will, uh, I will uh, refer from any other comments. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else have any comments before? Uh, All right. So just, I'm going to wrap up and just remind the Council that there is a major traffic study that's been sent out. Yep. You have three uh, particular bidders. Uh, we are definitely going to look forward to supporting that major traffic study. It's a, it's a traffic study that takes in not only the main boulevards, but the side streets as well. Uh, we've also had com communications between Mr. Philbin and State Representative um, Rosalie Vincent about the park. And uh, there were early conversations about putting some money into Sullivan Park. I know it's a DCR park, but I want you to know that we're doing everything we can, not just to bring a great project to you, but to make some ancillary benefits uh, that will be long lasting and certainly beneficial to this great community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So this will be uh, left in committee and we'll take it up on December 18th at 5.30, which is also uh, signed die for the City Council. So if it is recommended that evening, that will be the vote of the Council. We have two more items on our agenda this evening. The next is CZ 17-05, Title 17 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Revere and the zoning map provided by Section 17.12.20 of the said title is hereby amended to change the zoning district designation of the property known at lot 120 American Legion Highway at 448 American Legion Highway from the residential B to general business. To the subcommittee, uh, Joseph Cotogio, 1 Spray Street, Revere, representing the applicants. I know there's a little uh, tight on time, and I understand that this will not be voted on by the, the City Council tonight because of the missing members. So uh, I'll be uh, a brief uh, to the, the subcommittee. Um, we'll recall that this uh, one lot uh, is uh, part of a nine-lot strip uh, on American Legion Highway that is all otherwise zoned uh, business, general business. Um, this one lot houses half of a commercial building which uh, encompasses nearly to the lot line. Um, the, the change in zoning is a, uh, that we are seeking, uh, I've represented, is a corrected change, um, something that is required. The lot uh, that exists now is uh, uh, taxed as commercial, has a commercial building on it, has uh, nothing else on it but uh, half of a commercial building. Um, we did present this to the planning board. Um, we've had uh, discussions with the, uh, the ward councillor. Uh, the planning board has uh, made a unanimous recommendation. Uh, we've also made a commitment to the ward councillor that once the zoning is corrected and we do have a proposal that we will be uh, presenting to uh, him first, uh, off, offered to meet with the neighbors as well. Um, so we would hope that this correction can be made. Um, and uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, Anything else I can provide, any other information I can provide. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so again, uh, because of the absence of two members of this committee as well as the council president, this will be held until the 18th. Are there any members of this committee or councillors that have any questions? Councillor Guanasso. Uh, the the councillor is correct in saying what, what he just stated. In, uh, obviously, uh, the uh, concession I'm looking forward to is if, in fact, this is changed by the city council, I would uh, request that a, before anything is proposed there, that we have a neighborhood meeting with the residents first. And I, uh, I hold that very strongly because uh, when the previous owner had it, we had a very eventful meeting. Uh, people came into that meeting uh, voting against it automatically, and then when they heard the proposal, they were very pleased with it. So I'm hoping that something similar will happen with this new owner and that we can uh, relieve the uh, concerns of the neighborhood and ha let everybody live in happily ever after. But uh, certainly it's inc incumbent upon the owner to uh, live up to the word of having a neighborhood meeting with myself included, and uh, then we can go forward with any proposals that they might have in the future. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors? So this will be taken up on the 18th. Just briefly to the uh, sure. Ward Council through you, we have uh, made that representation, and we will uh, stick with it. Thank you. There's one more item on our agenda this evening, uh, CZ 17-06, and this is your appeal of the Recreational Marijuana Ordinance. Again, since Council President Keith was um, the maker of this ordinance and someone who is definitely very vocal on it, I want to make sure that he's a part of this committee because I think that's very important. So we will take this up on the 18th so he can be a part of that as well. Are there any members of the council or committee that have any questions on this? 
And so we'll hold that till the 18th. Uh, that covers our agenda since we have a few minutes at the end of the meeting. Does anyone have any comments on anything before we move into the city council meeting? Sure. Yeah. Anyone can speak. But if you don't tell us you want to speak, we don't know you want to speak. Keep watching everyone else do their wrong. So John Krasavka, 16 Hazy Street. Um, this is about the Beach Boulevard project. Um, I mean, there's a whole lot of concerns that I have, but I won't touch them. It's the parking issue that's the main one for, for us. Um, I, I don't think it's right to talk about Bianchi's parking, that it's not a problem. There's only one or two cars. There are lots of cars that park behind there for Bianchi's. Where will they park? There's a restaurant that was mentioned. Where will they park? It's, there could be you know, 40, 50 cars for this restaurant. Then the daily parking, especially the summer parking. Visit parking, that's not even being considered at all. Everyone, first of all millennials, since we're talking about millennials and they're not aliens, they're not gonna just come out of somewhere. They usually have a car each. There's a good chance most of them, if they are millennials, because if they're not, they're gonna have the children, unless you somehow control that. Um, they will have a car each. Where will their visitors park? Um, and there's a park, and the attorney's talking about the park. Where's the parking for the park, if all of that parking is also taken? Um, as for the other end that uh, Councillor Zambuda was talking about, we were actually kept out of meetings. We wanted to protest, and there were private meetings being held by the person constructing, and were actually asked out of those private meetings. So we actually tried to, to, to fight for that as well. But one thing that is important, I think, for people to remember is that Revere's a public beach, and you're cutting out the public. You're totally cutting them out. It's no place for the public. It's not even any place for the Revere residents any longer. It seems that the only ones that will get the benefit in the future will be those who either own or rent on the beach. And I think that's sad. Thank you. Anyone else before we conclude this meeting? All right, this concludes the zoning subcommittee meeting. Uh, we will be on a brief recess and the regular city council meeting will start in just a few moments. <laughs>